Everybody, welcome back. Another used car video today. We are doing the Jaguar XJ220. This car is very cool looking. This is definitely one of the coolest looking Jaguars, I think, in existence. This thing is uh, very early, uh, early 90s, I believe. It's a 91, 92, something like that. Um, very cool car. Very... Uh, very cool design look that's just a really rad style now when I look at this car like you know I'm a bit older and you know I come from uh, you know I was born in the uh, late 70s grew up in the 80s and there was a movie back in the day called the Wraith and this had Charlie Sheen and Nick Cassavetes in it and then the the, uh, the hero car of that movie it's a, definitely a car movie so if you're into cheesy car movies check that out it's pretty rad but uh, in that movie, there was a car called the Wraith, and it was a uh, Dodge M4S. Now, this Jaguar XJ220 definitely looks a lot like that car. Just the way it's styled and designed, it has a lot of that kind of style, especially toward the back. But anyway, let's talk about the Jaguar XJ20 and not the Dodge M4S. So this car, uh, there's a significance behind the uh, 220, and we'll go over that in a minute. Um, as far as what I did with this car, nothing. I literally did nothing but paint it, put wheels on it. I did not do any tuning whatsoever. It is completely stock. And as you can see, the uh, the AI today is just a pile of PMS, I think. Uh, they're just having a bad day. <laughs> you see them all muffing up back there? That's good stuff. Anyway, let's jump out and we'll uh, take a look at the history of the car because, like I said, I didn't do anything to it. So we'll just take a brief look at the history of the car and uh, tell you about the XJ220. Um, like I said, this is a very, very cool looking car. Uh, I guess the 92, okay, I was off my one, my bad. I should be flogged for that, I guess. Um, but this, I mean, jeez, I mean, look at this thing. I mean, we'll take a look at the specs anyway real quick. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty rad. Um, 515 horses stock, weighing in at 3,000 pounds, little on the heavy side, uh, came stock with sports tires, no tuning whatsoever. It's all stock. Man, I mean, whoa, that thing is so cool looking. Let's go ahead and let's take a look at it, though. XJ220. So, in 1988, Jaguar showed a prototype of a sports car machine at the British International Motor Show called the XJ220. In 91, it unveiled the final production version of the car at the Tokyo Motor Show. The XJ220 received its name from its maximum speed, which was 220 miles an hour. Yeah, back in the day, 220 miles an hour, it's like, holy shit, holy shit. I mean, nowadays it's like, really, that's it? But that's still pretty impressive for a 90s car weighing at 3,000 pounds, dude. Jesus. Jaguar entrusted the production of the XJ220 to Jaguar Sports, a joint venture team with TWR, which developed a Group C race car and was in charge of its race team. Prototype engine was a naturally aspirated V12, but the XJ220 that was shown in Tokyo came with a twin-turbo 3.5-liter V6 from the XJR11 Group C car. Chassis was crafted from the composite aluminum honeycomb and carbon Cavalier, not unlike that of a serious race car. So basically, it was built like a race car for the road. Uh, serious ground effects were added, again, just like Group C Racer. Uh, setting the car apart from the race machine was a luxurious interior, which nowadays looks very bland. Uh, setting the car apart from the race machine uh, was a luxurious tier that was finished with the finest materials around in the same manner as the company's notable luxury cars. In 93, Jaguar entered the 220 into the GT class of the 24-hour Le Mans. Taking the wheel were David Coulthard, David Brabham, and John Nielsen. Hopefully I didn't butcher their names too bad. Uh, who teamed up successfully uh, to complete the endurance race and win in its class, or so everyone thought. A month later, the XJ220 was disqualified due to an exhaust violation, and its result was stricken from the books. Later, the XJ220 was entrusted to the famous team Chamberlain Race Team and continued to participate in GT races, including the 24 Le Mans. Now, this little bunch of bullshit disqualified due to an exhaust violation? Look, man, racing is all about cheating. I mean, it's been nothing but cheating since day one. It's 
that's what it's all about is what can you get away with cassette deck highest quality interior my asshole <laughs> that's nice way to cheap it out jag anyway back to what i was saying about the racing and cheating and stuff it's all about finding the advantage it's the same thing with any race team they're gonna cheat their ass off any way they can it's not why did you cheat it's how did you get caught you know what i mean it's it, really racing is cheating but this car aside from all of that this car is just amazing i mean look at that just gorgeous body style that is a fantastic looking car i mean in you know the words of jeremy clarkson it's a jag